Today in this video, I'll be walking you through one of the three procedural nodes of my most recent Blender Creative Package for the month of July, which you can get on Gumroad, Blender Market, and Patreon from the links given in the description. And in this video, you're gonna learn exactly how to make procedural moss in Blender, so let's get right into it. This is something I don't think many people have attempted to do in Blender before, so I decided to include it along with my procedural smudge node and also a dirt node. But of course, as always, I'll be giving you the information for free. But if you want to support the channel and help me keep making these tutorials for you guys, then you can check out my products or support me on Patreon. Anyways, what we have here is this dinosaur skull which I thought was a pretty good model to test and showcase my moss on. It has this simple material setup on the surface with all the texture generating nodes compressed into this tiny node group for or ease of access. Going through the whole setup quickly, we have the moss node group using the object coordinates here. The base color output from the node is mixed with the original texture using a mix RGB node with the blending mode set to overlay. The mask output, which is just a black and white texture, is plugged into the factor input to determine which parts of the base color will be overlaid on top of the original texture. The mix RGB node is then connected to the base color input of the principal shader. We're also going to use the mask output tweaking it using a color ramp to control the subsurface factor of the principal shader. The subsurface color can be set to a greenish color so that the moss reacts to the light passing through it accordingly. There's also a roughness output which is a grayscale texture. I connected it to a mix RGB node with the blending mode set to mix. The first color is set to a white color with the value set to 0.9 so that we have a high roughness default value on top of which we will mix the roughness of the moss. The factor will be controlled using the mask output so that we only change the roughness where the areas are white on the mask. This is then connected to the roughness input of the principal shader. We also have a final grayscale output from the node which we can use as the height input of a displacement node to introduce micro displacement into our material which will make things look even more realistic because the moss will get some depth to it. The displacement node is connected to the displacement input of the material output. Note that this only works in cycles and only when you change the displacement method to displacement only or displacement and bump under the material settings. Now with all of that out of the way, let's take a look inside the moss node. As you can see, this doesn't look as intimidating as you might have thought. There are really just three steps to making this thing. Making the mask, making the moss texture and then mixing them together so that the moss texture is only appearing where we have our mask. So let's get rid of this material and make a new one so that we can focus on each step properly. First, since we want our moss to grow from the crevices and the deeper parts of our model, we will add an ambient occlusion node. I'll be using cycles to preview this, but you can also use EV with ambient occlusion turned on. It won't be as accurate as cycles, but for previewing, it's more than enough. The default value of 16 samples works just fine for us. I didn't really tweak it because I didn't feel the need to, but we can add a color ramp to the AO output and pinch in the handles to increase the contrast and include more of the crevices in the black areas. Since moss is usually phototropic, they'll grow to Towards the light or grow more in the areas with more sunlight. So what we'll do is add a texture coordinate node and a separate XYZ node. If we connect the normal output from it to the separate XYZ node, we can extract the individual axis of the vector channel. In this case, we want to use the Z channel which looks as if there is light coming from straight above the object. Make sure you have the rotation applied on your model though if you want this to work normally. Now what I did was that I distorted the coordinates a bit so that they aren't as clean of a gradient from top to bottom. I added noise texture with the scale set to 8, DT to 6, roughness to 0.77 and distortion to 0.7. Then I mix the color output of the noise texture with the normal output of the texture coordinate node with a mix RGB node with the noise texture on color 1 and normal coordinate on color 2 with a very low mix factor around 0.16. Make sure you do this before the separate XYZ node though. Then we can move on to adding a color ramp to the Z channel of the separate XYZ node and increase the contrast of the mask. We need to now find a way to mix both of these masks together so that they're one mask. Since the AO mask was black, meaning that we wanted the moss to appear in the black areas and here we want the moss to appear in the white areas, we simply want to invert this second mask that we created and then combine them both by using a mix RGB or math node set to multiply. This will give us a result as such. We want to make this more random by introducing some patches where the moss will grow. So for this, let's add another noise texture, set the scale to 3 and detail to 4 with the roughness at maximum. Let's run it through a color ramp for more control and tweak the handles till we get some black patches like these. Remember
Remember, here, black means the areas where the moss will grow. Keeping that in mind, let's multiply this with the combined AO and distorted Z mask from before. So this will be our final mask, but with one extra step. We just need to invert this one last time to make things easier to understand for us later on. So once again, the white areas are moss and the black areas are no moss. That's basically it for the moss mask. Now let's work on the moss texture. To start off, let's add a Voronoi texture with the scale set to 100 or more to get this dot pattern. Now we'll duplicate this, change the type to N sphere radius, and then we're going to add a math node, set it to less than, connect the dot pattern to the value input and the second Voronoi texture to the threshold. If the scale of both of them are the same, it'll give us a dot pattern like so, where none of the dots will be intersecting each other. I found this setup from Iyad Ahmed on Twitter, where he posts Blender node tips like these and they are honestly pretty helpful. I have recently started a Twitter account as well, where I'll be mainly sharing updates on the channel, so if you're interested, you can follow me there as well. Anyway, what do we do with this dot pattern now? Well, what I did was that I distorted them to get somewhat of a mossy pattern. I used a noise texture with the scale set to 20, detail to 2, roughness to 1, and distortion to 2 as well. Make sure that the generative textures you've used all throughout are using the object coordinate from the texture coordinate node to get uniform results. Now we'll add a mix RGB, connect the object coordinate to color 1, and noise texture to color 2, and set the factor to something extremely low like 0.08, so that we're only mixing a little bit of that noise texture into the vector channel. If you connect the output of the mix RGB node to the respective input of the first Voronoi texture, and then connect the noise texture before the mix RGB node to the second Voronoi texture, and check the output of the less than node, you'll find a pattern like this. In my opinion, this works very well for a moss pattern. You can tweak it further to get more mossy patterns I guess, but this is what I settled on. We will now add some color to this texture we just made. This is actually quite easy. I took the output from the noise texture we used before the multiply node and connected it to a color ramp. I added 5 stops to this color ramp and then added some moss colors I got off of Adobe color. This gave me this result. Now I used a mix RGB node and connected this colorful texture to this color 2 input and kept color 1 completely black in color. Then I connected the moss pattern we just made to the factor input of the mix RGB node. That's all I did to get the color into the moss texture. Now finally, we need to mask out the moss so that it appears only in the white areas of the mask we made earlier. Firstly, I multiplied the output of the invert node, which was our mask for the moss, with the less than node, which was our moss texture pattern. This made our moss pattern appear only in the white areas of the mask, but this would make the moss look very subtle in the final output. So I decided to mix in the original mask with the multiply node using a mix RGB node set to linear light to get some white background in the moss pattern. This output is what will be used as a mask for mixing between anything and the moss. Now we can add another mix RGB node, use this as the factor, color 1 set to black and color 2 set to the colored texture we made earlier. And that's gonna be our base color. We're also going to add two color ramps and have the final grayscale output we had control the factor of the color ramp. We'll take the white handle of the first color ramp and change the value to 0.8. This will be our roughness map. In the second color ramp, we'll take the black handle and change the value to 0.5. This will be our height map and we'll Will work directly with the default mid-level value of the displacement node. And that's all you need to do to make moss in Blender. Watch the beginning of the video again where I go over how to use it in the material setup to better understand it. Before I end this video though, I just want to quickly show you the different parameters you can connect a value node to so that you can control it easily later. The first one is the scale of the individual clumps of moss which is controlled by the scale of the two Voronoi textures we had for generating the moss texture. Make sure you use one value node for both of them. The second one which you might want to control later would be the the AO mask distance so you can have an external value node to control the distance of the ambient occlusion node. Lastly for a random seed control that generates the random textures for each material, we need to change the noise textures from 3D to 4D and control the W value of them using a value node. You can also have one for the Voronoi textures but I excluded them from mine. So yeah that marks the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. If you did then make sure to show your appreciation by liking this video and sharing it with your blender head friends and well, if you don't have any, which I can totally understand, you might want to consider our Discord server where all of us chat and get feedback on our work. And did I mention that we also have started an exclusive monthly Blender Art contest, which is currently going on and the deadline is 11th of August. So there's still some time left if you want to submit your artwork and win awesome rewards. I'll put a section at the end of the description linking to all of the creators who helped us make this contest possible for you guys, which also includes the products they've sponsored us with to distribute to the winners. They're all amazing creators who have amazing products, so I recommend that 
that you take a look at their stuff. Once again, if you want to buy this creative package, I'll have links down below. If you're interested to see more of such content in the future, then hit that subscribe button to not miss out on new videos. Comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions. I've also started a newsletter recently where I'll be sharing some awesome stuff happening in the community and my brand and share exclusive discounts to products. Finally, I want to take the time to thank my Patreons who donate to me monthly and make creating these videos possible for you guys. And they are Will, Jovin Devero, Master Zeon 1001, Marion Mir, Max Chandler, and Treligan. Also, thank you guys for watching till the end of this video. That goes a long way in helping the channel grow. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you guys in the next video.